so dear students this is the continuation of the chapter number 16 which was uh, already presented in part 1 in part 1 you studied about the structure of the capillaries and uh, partially the physics and physiology of microcirculation now we will move on towards the actual processes the pressure changes within the capillaries which occur from the arterial end to the venous end and how these changes are responsible for different uh, processes that are occurring across the capillary when it is passing through the tissues so you have to notice that uh, the capillaries they have a dual function a filtration function at the arterial end and a net reabsorptive function at the venous end so we will see in the uh, future slides that how these uh, two functions are maintained and balanced by the capillaries so this was the last slide of the previous lecture in this you could see that uh, the intracellular and extracellular fluids they were precisely kept in control with the help of uh, 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 different mechanisms so the total body fluid was about 60% of the body weight that is 42 uh, liters of water in a 70 kg man and out of those 42 liters about 27 to 28 liters was intracellular fluid that is 2/3 and one third that is 14 liters was the extracellular fluid now about uh, these fluids you have uh, already studied uh, partially in homeostasis so one of the components of these fluids is interstitial fluid interstitial fluid is the part of the fluid which is present between the cells so when there is a space in the tissues it is occupied by a uh, fluid known as interstitial fluid the interstitial fluid accounts for about 13 liters of fluid so it is a part of extracellular fluid the interstitial fluid but it accounts for most part of the extracellular fluid the extracellular fluid is about uh, 14 to 15 liters out of that 11 uh, to 12 to 13 liters about uh, uh, that is interstitial fluid the rest is blood plasma and one liter is transcellular fluid so interstitial uh, spaces are the intracellular substances that surround the microcirculatory bed and the lymphatic capillaries they are composed of collagen and elastic fibers they have a filter system and a reabsorptive system the reabsorptive system in includes lymphatic capillaries and venules now you will study in this diagram that interstitial fluid it is composed of free fluid vesicles rivulets of free fluid uh, free fluid rivulet is the smaller form of a river so small rivers of free fluid are present like you have islands of uh, land in uh, between the rivers and uh, water bodies so these this is a water body between solid or semi solid particles rest is the collagen fibers the proteoglycan filaments and uh, some so the whole uh, structure if i would like to tell you is that it is just like marmalade have you ever uh, uh, you must have all uh, already seen uh, the orange marmalade that orange chunks the peels uh, of oranges they are uh, being sliced and they are suspended in the orange jam so similarly these chunks of collagen fibers and proteoglycan fibers these are suspended within the interstitial fluid now as far as the transport is concerned substances are transported through capillary membranes while lipid soluble uh, the lipid soluble substances like oxygen and carbon dioxide they travel across the capillary membrane through the lipid bilayer whereas water soluble ions or glucose they travel through the specialized pores that you studied in the first part of this lecture the greater the concentration gradient the greater will be the rate of diffusion now the forces there are forces present the forces which are present across the capillary membrane they are both pulling forces and pushing forces there are two hydrostatic pressures one within the capillary one out, uh, outside the capillary two osmotic pressures colloid osmotic pressure which is formed because of albumin one inside the capillary one outside the capillary as i will show you in the next uh, diagram in the next slide so pushing and pulling forces the concept of pushing and pulling forces will be clear from here 
the capillary pressure the capillary hydrostatic pressure which is denoted by a p it is the pushing force outside more the capillary hydrostatic pressure more will be the pushing force it will try to push the uh, water out of the capillary similarly there is interstitial fluid pressure it will try to push the water back towards the capillary so these two pressures are pushing pressures if this pressure is more than this there will be net filtration out of the capillary if this pressure interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure is more than the capillary hydrostatic pressure there will be net reabsorption into the capillary see net reabsorption will be there into the capillary now as far as colloid osmotic pressure is concerned you have to clear this concept in mind very clearly you have to understand that colloid osmotic pressure is a pulling pressure just like you place a sponge in water it will absorb all the water so this is what albumin is doing albumin is trying to absorb the water whereas same albumin if it is present outside the capillary it will try to absorb the pressure so that's why the arrow of plasma colloid osmotic pressure is towards the capillary towards the interior of the capillary it is the presence of uh, uh, so i should make a shape of uh, albumin an irregular shape say for example this is a molecule of albumin here and this is an other molecule of uh, let me color it uh, yellow okay so this is a molecule of albumin now what this albumin is doing this is pulling the water this is the, uh, trying to pull the water towards its side so instead of pushing the uh, water outside it is pulling the water inside so this albumin is pulling the water inside now same will be the case here if this albumin is present in the interstitial fluid this will try to pull the water outside now this water will be pulled outside from the capillaries to the outside now this will clarify the concept of colloid osmotic pressure the colloid osmotic pressure is a pulling pressure it is an absorptive pressure so if the colloid osmotic pressure is more that means there will be net reabsorption so there are total two pushing forces outside one is capillary hydrostatic pressure the other is interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure denoted by a pi pi interstitial fluid now two are the pushing forces inside the capillary the inside forces the pushing forces inside the capillary are plasma colloid osmotic pressure and the interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure these two forces one and two these two forces are pushing the water inside these two forces are pushing the water outside so now what will be the net filtration the net filtration will be the net filtration pressure coefficient will be colloid osmotic pressure uh, uh, capillary hydrostatic pressure minus interstitial fluid pressure minus oncotic pressure which is another name for colloid osmotic pressure of plasma plus oncotic pressure or colloid osmotic pressure of interstitial fluid so this is the net filtration pressure which occurs in response to the capillaries in response to the different pressures so as you are learning these pressures you have to understand that how these interplay later on what is the effect of different plasma proteins on colloid osmotic pressure out of the total 28 mm of mercury of uh, colloid osmotic pressure within the capillary of the plasma colloid osmotic pressure most of the equilibrium is maintained by albumin that is about 3/4 21.8 even more than 3/4 about 1/4 is given by globulins and a very minimal role is played by fibrinogen because the concentration of albumin is double than that almost double than that of globulins but still its role in plasma colloid osmotic pressure is much more as compared to the globulins now on the arterial end the filtration forces are favoring a net filtration whereas on the venous end there is net 
reabsorption this is shown in this diagram and this is again repeated here when the arteries they give off the arterioles and meta arterioles they are entering the cap the blood is entering the capillaries there is net filtration and when they it is passing through the venous end there is net reabsorption so here it is going outside and here it is going inside into the capillaries and out of the capillaries same process is shown here that in the arterial end there is net filtration the concentration gradient is towards the interstitial fluid whereas it is against the it is towards the capillary in interior of the capillary on the venous end so there is net reabsorption now the next slide is very important because in when you study guyton there are three tables which you have to study separately but if you study the next diagram this diagram you will have to just memorize it once you don't have to memorize three uh, different tables separately so at the arterial end the capillary pressure is 30 mm of mercury whereas the oncotic pressure it remains the same throughout the arterial and venous end of the capillary that is 28 mm of mercury the interstitial fluid pressure it also remains the same throughout the capillary that is minus 3 mm of mercury whereas the colloid osmotic pressure of the interstitial fluid it is 8 mm of mercury it also means that this is a pulling pressure outside the capillary now just under uh, just see that this is the arterial end and this is the venous end on the arterial end and venous end three pressures are same this is similar to this this minus 3 is similar to this minus 3 this 8 is similar to this 8 now what does this minus 3 means plasma interstitial fluid pressure this interstitial fluid pressure is negative this means that this is not a pull uh, pushing pressure this is being continuously sucked or pumped by the lymphatic system this pressure if it would have been positive it would have been a pushing pressure but when it is negative minus 3 it becomes minus minus you know that it becomes plus so it becomes a pressure favoring the net filtration out of the capillary so this pressure of interstitial fluid is favoring the it should have uh, been against the absorption against the filtration but it is favoring the filtration because there is continuous pump now let me show you uh, it uh, show it to you in a diagram that how it is acting instead of being this pressure like this it acts like this because it is continuously being pumped away by lymphatic systems it is continuously taken away this pressure is continuously being pumped away uh, the lymphatics are draining it draining it draining it so you have seen uh, when a gutter is overflowing there are suction pumps supplied and uh, it takes on uh, the process of draining so this continuous pumping causes a net negative pressure so if we put this negative pressure into this equation this again becomes a positive pressure minus minus you know that it becomes plus so if we add up if we put these values in this equation there is net filtration pressure at the arterial end which is 30 plus 8 minus minus 3 that becomes plus 3 minus 28 that becomes 13 mm of mercury so only one pressure is opposing that is colloid osmotic pressure of capillaries so in the net result only one pressure is opposing this uh, uh, filtration in both uh, the parts arterial end and the venous end now on the venous end all other pressures are same but the capillary hydrostatic pressure because it has already given at the arterial end so it reduces to 10 mm of mercury so if we add up these things we will have 21 minus 28 10 plus 3 plus 8 is 21 minus 28 is the opposing pressure so we will have a net reabsorption of minus 7 mm of mercury so at the venous end the pressure is minus 7 mm on the arterial end the filtration pressure is plus 13 mm of mercury so this is shown in the net outward forces and inward forces 
when we are talking about the mean this is the arterial end this is the venous end if we take out the mean it will be 17.3 millimeters of mercury the capillary hydrostatic pressure if we take an average taking out the mean of the arterial and venous pressures it will be 17.3 millimeters of mercury so if we take out the whole uh, equation here taking uh, the mean as uh, the capillary hydrostatic pressure there will be a total capillary pressure of 17.3 negative interstitial fluid pressure 3 that you have already studied and interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure is 28.3 whereas the mean inward force is the same plasma colloid osmotic pressure of 28 so the overall result that we get the mean of this capillary is a net outward pressure of 0.3 millimeters of mercury forgetting the arterial and venous end if you are taking the mean in general now studying about the lymphatic system the lymphatic system continuously drains the interstitial fluid in order to create a negative suction balance and in order to avoid the accumulation of fluid within the interstitial fluid uh, interstitial spaces this diagram you will uh, study in detail in anatomy we will move to, to the physiology of the lymphatic system now edema is the accumulation of fluid in the interstitial spaces when there is filtration coefficient and the lymphatics are not effectively working the fluid will start accumulating inside the interstitial uh, spaces as you have already studied about swelling in blood and uh, you will also study it in uh, this circulatory system there was swelling as a part of inflammation that is a part of, uh, that is a type of localized edema so this is usually caused by a disturbance in stalling forces now mechanism of edema formation either of the pulling or pushing forces is uh, disturbed if the pushing forces outside they are increased like capillary hydrostatic pressure is increased because of some venous constriction, uh, constriction dvt or heart failure or increased plasma interstitial fluid pressure due to release of vasoactive substances in inflammation uh, for example in burn trauma infection it will also cause some localized edema or vice versa if the pulling force is reduced decreased plasma co uh, colloid osmotic pressure you all know that albumin is formed in liver and whenever the liver is failing or the kidneys are failing they lose more proteins than they are made than, than they are made in the body so the albumin is reduced in hypoproteinemia this will cause edema which will be a generalized type of edema so this is a cause of increased uh, colloid osmotic uh, increased pl uh, plasma hydrostatic pressure due to deep venous thrombosis or heart failure this is a deep venous thrombosis that is increasing the pressure and that is causing the edema in the leg edema because of decreased plasma protein osmotic pressure either because of nephrotic syndrome which causes kidney failure and as a result more than 3.5 gram per day of proteins are lost or bunny nearby proteins proteins are deficient and they are reduced because of poor production by the liver so all these effects uh, will lead to a net effect of increased filtration of uh, fluid out of the capillaries into the microcirculation of lymph uh, or interstitial spaces so there is the diagram this is the diagram of Cauchy-Yorker, curve which is because of severe protein deficiency and malnutrition now localized edema because of some inflammatory process like burns tissue injury or infection or local inflammation the capillary changes uh, its permeability the net coefficient of capillary permeability it uh, is changed and the tissue is more vulner vulnerable to localized edema now the lymphatic capillaries are responsible for returning interstitial fluid and proteins to the vascular compartment finally they end up in the circulation once again through the thoracic duct into the large veins that you all know are vena cavi superior and inferior vena cavi the lymph vessels have smooth muscle for movement and surrounding the skeletal muscle contractions and this contains open ends now this disease is known as filariasis the filariasis is caused by a microorganism and this my uh, these microfilari here are the microscopic worms they cause 
a disturbance in the lymphatic system leading to elephant foot also known as elephantiasis so this is a general uh, localized edema of the feet which is caused by a worm because of differentiated uh, uh, because of a disturbance in different types of uh, flow within the capillaries the edema occurs leading to elephant foot so this is an overall circulation of uh, fluids and uh, thank you very much get prepared for the test on saturday lecture 17 will be uploaded as well so chapter 14 to 17 are included within the test on uh, which will be conducted on saturday inshallah